Okay, so we're going to be graphing these two inequalities on the same graph and where both of them have a solution is going to be the solution to this set, okay? The system of inequalities that we have here. So this one we'll do in purple, okay, is already in slope intercept. So we start on negative six, that's our first dot, and this slope they gave us two, which is really two over one, is our rise and run to find the next dot, which is up two over one. So that'll be this dot here. So this is going to be a solid line because it's underlined here. So this, these are the solutions for the what for the y right now. Okay, now I haven't shaded yet. I shade at the end so that I don't mess up anything here. Because if, if this is over here, then I'm going to be shading. That's going to be really bothersome. So let's fix this. I have to leave y by itself. Okay, so I'm going to move the x to the other side. So I'm left with, I haven't done anything with this. I'm going to move the x in front of here. So that's in slope intercept form like this. So the x is going to become negative x and a minus one right here. Then I'm going to change the sign. So I'm going to multiply everything by negative one. Now doing so is also going to change the direction of the inequality. So this is going to become positive. This is going to become less than, this is going to become x, and that's going to become positive y. So now this is written in slope intercept form. Now I'll be able to graph it. We're going to be starting on positive 1, and the, the graph is 1 over 1. So 1 over 1, because that's what's next to the x. So the slope is 1 over 1, so 1 over 1. And this is a dotted line because it's not, or equal, it's not less than or equals 2. It's just less than. So this is going to be a dotted line. Okay. So the first one, now we're going to shade the purple one. We'll shade it in the highlighter purple. So y is less than. So the answers are less than this line or equal to. So less than or equal to this line. So less than would mean below. So I'm shading this area here. So all of this is shaded. Okay. Now, the other one, y is greater than, y is less than this line. So all of the answers for the green shading is going to be, all the answers are less than this line. So they're less than this line here. So it's all of this. Now where the two colors um, converge, okay, where the two colors converge are the actual solution set. So this is the solution set right here. All of this, including the purple line, because the purple line is also part of this. So where the colors are both shading is where the solution set is. Now, so that's how you do this. So you're just graphing two lines, shading both of them, and then where they're both shaded, okay, or where they're both intersecting because everything on the purple line is inside of the green shading. So that's totally a possible answer, okay? This is not because it's dotted, meaning it's not part of the solution. This is less than or equal to, so the line is solid. All right, next one, we'll be talking about scientific notation. So how to convert this into scientific notation. So there's two parts to a scientific notation. There's the part in the front, you have to write times 10, it's always times 10, and then the exponent goes there. So this number has to be a number, here's the dot. We're gonna move this dot somewhere that makes this giant number less than 10, okay? So no, 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 it's still 20, too big, 2.01, there it is, 2.015, okay? So yes, now it is uh, less than 10. How many times did I move the decimal point to get from here to here? Well, I moved it one, two, three, four, five. So this is gonna be a positive five. And now this number is written in scientific notation. 
This is standard form. This is scientific notation. Okay. Now this one here, same thing. I have to put a number here times 10 and then I need an exponent to turn into scientific notation. I have to move this dot. See this one, they gave you the dot. I have to move this dot until this number because it's so small. Okay. It has to be above one. This number has to be, his has to be less than 10. Okay. But can't go below one. So it can be one and it's allowed to be above one, but it can't be more than 10. So nope, 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 nope. There it is. So 5.1. If I would have done it earlier, it would have been 0.51. That's not more than one or equal to. So that one's done. How many times did I move the dot? Now, how can I tell somebody that the dot moves in the other direction? You're going to write this as a negative number. So one, two, three, four, five, negative five. Meaning it's a number less than one, very, very little. Here we go. Now we're going to be converting scientific notation into standard form. So here's 6.32. The number is going to move not, this dot is going to move nine times, making it bigger. Okay, because this is the end result of this because it's positive is a big number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, if you leave your answer like this, this is wrong. You have two decimal points in a question. This is wrong. I just did this, so then I put the appropriate amount of zeros. So now I have six, three, two, zero, 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 zero. That is the correct answer. Now this one, four, it's four and the decimal points here, right? It's negative seven, meaning I'm gonna make this number into a really small number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here's the new dot, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the answer, this is not the answer. This is incorrect because you have two decimal points in a number. You have to tell me where it ended up. I don't know if you know what you're doing at all. So you have to tell me what it looks like. So behind the decimal point, there are six zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then a four. That's the correct answer. Correct, incorrect. Correct, incorrect. Okay? Now let's go over here. How would you multiply scientific notations and leave the result as a scientific notation? What you would do is you multiply these numbers like normal. They're multiplying. So 3.5 times 7. That's going to give you 21 plus 3.5. So 24.5 is the beginning number. Now these have the same base and they're multiplying. So the exponents are just going to add. So you're thinking to yourself, negative 3 plus the 5. And that's going to give you 2. So times 10 to the second power. So yes, it looks like it's done, but this number is not allowed to be that big. It's not allowed to be 24. It's not allowed to be over 10. It can't even be 10. Okay, so it has to be lower. So I have to move this over. So I'm going to move it one extra movement. So now it's going to be 2.45. So I moved in an extra step, which means I have to rep represent that over here by moving in an extra step. So this is the final correct answer. And you only have to do that if your first number is incorrect. If you had to go back, if you have to go back a number, that means that this is going to be, um, that number would have gone back. Okay. So let's do this one. Uh, same thing here. Now we're dividing scientific notations and leaving the answer as a scientific notation. So this is going to divide. So 3.6 divided by 3 is going to be 1, that's 0. Bring down the 6. Here's the decimal point. That's going to be 2, 6, 0. So it's going to be 1.2. 1.2 times 10, because I'm leaving it in scientific notation, the exponents are dividing, they have the same base, so they're just going to be subtracting. So 8 minus 3 is going to be 5, and there's our final answer.
1.2 times 10 to the 5 is the solution to these two scientific notations dividing. Now we're going to move over here and do a couple of graphs here. Okay. Let's leave that here. Let's keep on moving. There we go. Okay. Slide this up a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to start with this one and then we're going to work on these three as well. So we're graphing this. This is going to create a curved line. It's the first time we've done a curved line. So you got to pay attention to the way it's going to look. First, Anything that is to the power of a variable like this will never equal zero. So this right here, okay, is never going to equal zero. That means y will never equal zero. What does that mean? That means the graph will never cross this line. It's not gonna cross it, okay? It is not going to cross this line. Okay, it's going to get really close to it, but it's not going to cross it. So now we graph our points. So it's going to be X and Y. We're going to put in this number so that we know where it crosses. We're going to put in one so we know what it does after it crosses. And we're going to put negative one to find out where it came from before it crossed. So three to the power of zero, well, any number to the power of zero is one. So that's one of them. What about three to the power of one? Three to the power of one is just three, so that was pretty easy. Three to the power of negative one, that means it's gonna be, it's on the wrong side of the fraction, so it's gonna be its inverse. So it's going to flip and become one over three. So these are our three coordinates. So zero, one, zero, one, one, three, one, three and negative one, one third. So negative one, one third. Okay, so it's going like, it's going in this direction. I see where it's coming from, but it can't cross. So I know it's coming from here, it's getting really close, but it doesn't cross it. And then it's going straight up. Okay, growing exponentially. So that is our graph. You see how it didn't cross? It kept on coming. It came from here and then it went straight up. Okay, growing exponentially. And it doesn't cross this. I want you to think of that. It's gonna make more sense when we get to this one here. All right, so we're gonna erase this, erase this. Now we're doing this one here. So we're gonna shift this over here. Oh, I don't know why everything moved. That makes no sense. Let's try that again. Just this. There we go. All right, so let's work on this one. So this one, here's x and here's our result, which is y. This is also y. So we're going to put 0 in there, 1, and negative 1. So the same exact numbers every time. Uh, this will never equal 0. So now we know that it's not crossing 0 at all. And now we know 0, when I put in there, is going to equal 1. When I put 1 in there, it's going to make 1 third. And when I put a negative one, it's going to flip it. So it's going to be three over one, which is really just three. So zero, one, one, one third, and negative one, three. So here we go. Now it's coming from here, and it's not crossing there. And just to make sure that I get this right, it's going up like that. Okay, so this is decaying. All right, exponential decay. The other one was exponential growth. All right, so that one's pretty easy. You're gonna see that these feel a little bit easier every time you do it. All right, next one, we'll be doing this one. All right. So again, the negative five is not being squared or, or has part of the exponent. This, the negative and the five are separate. Okay, unless they're, you put a parenthesis around the five and the negative sign, they are separate entities. So again, same numbers, zero, one, negative one. So if I, if I put a zero in here, it's gonna be negative five to the power of zero. Well, five to the power of zero is one, so negative one, okay? So negative one for the, for the y. All right, so what if I put a one in here? 
5 to the power of 1 is 5, so this is going to be a negative 5. So negative 5. And then a negative sign for this. So 5 to the power of negative 1 is 1 fifth, so this is going to be negative 1 fifth. Negative 1 fifth. Okay? So now we just plot these points, knowing that this could never equal 0. This will never equal 0. So y will never equal 0. So 0, negative 1, 1, negative 5, and negative 1 and 1 fifth, somewhere around here. Okay, so it looks like this. Going really, really fast. All right? So that's this one. That's the way this is going to look. All right, last one. This one's our last one, and then we are, no, I just press this button, and then I came over here to the highlights. Okay, there we go. All right, last one. So this is going to be uh, x, y. We're going to put 0, 1, negative 1 here. Okay, now look at this. If this, well, 2 to the power of x. If this is never going to equal 0, then 2 minus 0 is never going to happen. So 2 in this result is never going to happen. 2 minus 0 is never going to happen. So 2 will never occur. So now we're going to graph it. So if I put a 0 in here, this is going to be 2 minus 2 to the power of 0. So this is going to make 1. So 2 minus 1 equals 1. Okay. Now I'm going to put a 1 here. 2 to the power of 1 is 2. So 2 minus 2 equals 0. Okay. And then the next one is negative 1. So I'll put negative 1 here. So 2 minus, so 2 to the negative 1 is going to be 1 half. So 2 minus a half is 1 and a half. So this is going to be 0, 1, 1, 0. That's going to be negative 1, 1 and 1 half. And it can't cross that, so I just know that's going to get really close to it and then start going up. All right, and that's it.